The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up. We got a big time emergency. A baby is born. There was just blood everywhere. Dead to the world. The limp, no heart rate, nothing. See a fight for life. It's just one punch after another. It was just this, okay, God, where are we? Where are you? As our week of prayer concludes. I knew that I was in the presence of God. He, he was right there at that moment. On today's 700 Club. Welcome to the 700 Club, a political showdown in Michigan. Lawmakers say the governor has gone too far with her stay-at-home order, and now this fight is going to court. Protesters took to the streets again Thursday with signs saying, shut down the lockdown and no work, no freedom. Jennifer Wishon brings us the story. USA! Despite protest by hundreds of Michiganders at the state capitol Thursday and efforts by the Republican-controlled House and Senate to stop her, Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer signed three new executive orders Thursday, extending the state's emergency and disaster declarations through the end of May, saying scientific data shows the state isn't out of the woods yet. Can't put a hard and fast timeline because a lot of this depends on human behavior and our ability to observe these best practices. Some residents see it as government overreach and a power grab. I've had enough of being told what I can and cannot do. I've had enough of worrying about bills and making money. No one, no, especially a politician, has the right to devalue an individual by labeling them non-essential. There were tense moments. State Senator Dana Polhanke tweeting, directly above me, men with rifles yelling at us. Some of my colleagues who own bulletproof vests are wearing them. Michigan has been hit hard, registering more than 40,000 cases, suffering nearly 3,700 deaths. But not everyone buys the numbers. I do think that, that we have a virus, but I do think that the numbers are inflated. I think it's all political. Republicans who control the legislature think the governor is overstepping her authority. At this point in the COVID crisis, what can the governor accomplish alone that she can't do together with the leadership of the House and the Senate? The State House passed a resolution authorizing the House Speaker to seek legal action against the governor for her conduct during the pandemic. She's facing a number of lawsuits, including one by five businesses arguing her pandemic-related executive orders have shuttered civil society, placed 10 million people in under house arrest and taking jobs away from nearly 1.2 million people, all without due process of law. My husband's an electrician and he cannot go back to work supposedly until May 7th, as long as that goes through, but he can go out on a golf course as of today. I don't think it's fair to start making those provisions. It is very important that we as Americans stand up for our, for our Constitution and for our civil liberties, because as we know, government continues to take and take. Governor Whitmer says she hopes to reopen certain sectors of the economy in the days ahead. But for now, she faces a political battle over government power. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Well, I think this is going to be the first in a whole series of actions against governors as uh, this lockdown continues on. And if they try to extend the lockdown, uh, Whit Whitmer got it into trouble because I think the specificity and the sort of odd differences that it was OK to be in a canoe, but you couldn't be in a, in a motorboat. I mean, it was, you know, sort of just bizarre on the face of it. Why, why, why the difference and why was one thing acceptable and another not? Uh, but people have a good point. If you can go out and golf, why can't you go work as an electrician? Uh, what, what is the difference here? Uh, and churches have a point that if you can go to a drive-in window at a fast food restaurant, why can't you go into a drive-in church? Uh, so this is just the first. I think we're going to see a whole series of these play out over the next few weeks. And if these lockdowns continue, uh, we'll, we'll see more and more protests. In other news, Joe Biden has finally broken his silence over a sexual allegation. John Jessup has that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? 
That's right. The vice president, Gordon, flatly denied that he sexually assaulted a former staffer named Tara Reid. Reid claims Biden pushed her up against a wall and put his hand up her skirt when he was a senator back in 1993. The allegation has gained traction in recent days after others supported Reid's account, including her brother, saying she previously told them about it. After several leading Democrats said Biden should respond, he appeared today on MSNBC's Morning Joe program. No, it is not true. I'm saying unequivocally, it never, never happened. And it didn't. It never happened. I don't remember any type of complaint she <clears throat> may have made. It was 27 years ago. And uh, I don't remember, nor does anyone else that I'm aware of. And uh, the fact is that I don't remember. I, I don't remember any complaint ever having been made. They said Biden went on to say that women who come forward with allegations should be listened to, but he also said those claims should be investigated. Although he was interviewed multiple times by major media organizations, Biden was never asked about the allegation until today. Conservatives repeatedly complained that the media had treated the Biden allegation far differently than those against Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh when he was nominated for the high court back in 2018. Well, the Justice Department is standing with people of faith and warning state officials whose actions may have infringed on constitutional rights. During social distancing lockdowns, we've seen pastors arrested, worshipers fined, and religious funerals shut down. All of that comes as this Sunday, many congregations are planning to take part in what's being called Reopen Church Sunday, with believers starting to meet again just before the National Day of Prayer Week begins. Caitlin Burke brings us that story. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, restrictions on church services and other gatherings have become a top religious freedom issue. This has led to lawsuits against a handful of states questioning whether protecting public health overrules the constitutional rights of Americans. If I don't exercise my right, I fear that I will lose my right. And my right to religion is one that's been fought for for centuries. I'm just trying to set rules that save people's lives. Kentucky joined seven other states slapped with lawsuits, accused of going too far in cracking down on religious liberty. Alliance Defending Freedom is representing Mississippi churchgoers suing local government officials after being fined $500 each for attending a drive-in church service. It's just funny how they pick and choose winners and losers, who could stay open. Walmart's always packed. Um, you know, the Home Depot, Lowe's is always packed. Grocery stores are always packed. But for some reason, suddenly it's dangerous if you go to church. Tuesday in New York City, crowds packed public parks to watch a flyover tribute by the Thunderbirds and Blue Angels. The city doing nothing to call people out for violating social distancing orders. Later that night, however, the mayor issued a strong warning to Orthodox Jews gathered in Brooklyn for the funeral of a local rabbi. Mayor Bill de Blasio tweeting out, quote, My message to the Jewish community and all communities is this simple. The time for warnings has passed. I have instructed the NYPD to proceed immediately to summons or even arrest those who gather in large groups. The Justice Department now stepping in in an effort to hold state and local governments accountable. In a memo, Attorney General William Barr urged the nation's federal prosecutors to be on the lookout for state and local coronavirus-related restrictions that could be unconstitutional. As many churches this weekend take part in what's being called Reopen Church Sunday, Groups like the Family Research Council are urging people to fellowship safely, using appropriate sanitation practices and adhering to social distancing guidelines. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. Thank you, Caitlin. Turning overseas to Israel, where its fight against COVID-19 has just received a major shot in the arm from a, group called, from a group called Our Crowd, one of Israel's leading investment organizations. As Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem, this could be a major step forward in finding a vaccine for the world. Two months ago, as COVID-19 began taking its grip on the world, CBN News reported on the research and development of a vaccine by the Migal Research Institute. We've reached a uh, winning formula for, for vaccination of poultry, which worked uh, very, very nicely. The Institute's work toward that poultry vaccine started in 2016, which gave Miguel a four-year head start against this sickness because it's similar to the human virus. So we're now backing this project and we're just 
beyond ourselves in terms of hope and optimism that this kind of uh, project coming out of Israel's Galilee can bring uh, potentially very, very good news to the world. Jonathan Medved, founder of Our Crowd, held their annual summit just before the pandemic. He chose to fund this research under a new company called MIGVAX. He says its formula brings a number of advantages. This is not their first rodeo. They've been working on a, a variety of coronavirus-related vaccines uh, in this area now for, for some time. But on top of that, this is an oral vaccine which is pretty much unique in terms of the other candidates that are out there. It doesn't require a shot. It'll work in hot climates in parts of Africa, because we, we need a vaccine for everybody. Medved says his organization has been on a mission since the pandemic began. He says it's all part of Israel's biblical calling. We're all here for a purpose. And the purpose of, 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 of Israel renewed, Israel rebuilt, Israel established not just as a strong member of the family of nations is that we are supposed to do this stuff okay we are supposed to be out there working on cures for cancer and to feed the world and to cure and prevent the coronavirus this is our calling and our ability at our crowd to help support these brave entrepreneurs and to link them to supporters and investors around the world, it doesn't get better than that. Medved hopes other investors will join the effort. And what's great about it is it's democratic so that any of your viewers who meet the criteria of accredited investors worldwide can now join together with us and fund this important uh, development and hopefully profit from the results. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Hopeful and promising news. Gordon? Very hopeful, very promising. At the same time, yeah, be wary of anyone who claims they have a cure for it. Uh, we've, we've got to be very cautious looking forward, at, and particularly for vaccines, just the development time, timeline. This particular one seems to have some promise, uh, but when you consider it's only been tested in bird populations, well, it's got a long way to go before it becomes effective for you and me. Well, the Bible tells us to give thanks in all circumstances. And if you're having a little trouble with that right now, you're not alone. I'm with you on that one. Well, today we have a Jewish prayer that may help you. The Nishmat is traditionally recited on the Sabbath and again at Passover. It focuses on praising God, especially in times of trouble. The soul of every living being shall bless your name, O Lord our God. You are God, and other than you, we have no king, redeemer, or savior. He who liberates, rescues, and sustains, answers and is merciful in every time of distress and anguish, who guides his world with kindness and his creatures with mercy. To you alone, we give thanks. In famine, you nourished us, and in plenty, you sustained us. From sword, you saved us. From plague, you let us escape. And from severe and enduring diseases, you spared us. Until now, your mercy has helped us, and your kindness has not forsaken us. Do not abandon us, O Lord our God, forever. By the mouth of the upright, you shall be exalted. By the lips of the righteous, you shall be blessed. By the tongue of the devout, you shall be sanctified. And amid the holy shall you be lauded. Still ahead, born dead, limp, no heart rate, this newborn was without oxygen or blood flow for 20 minutes. How did he survive? Against all odds. That's coming up.
In today's highly divided political culture, attempts to stop free speech occur on a frequent basis, and political groups masquerade as grassroots movements. Well, Faithful America is one of these groups, and it works to get Christians and conservatives off the air. Dale Hurd has the story. The group Faithful America claims to have fought Hobby Lobby, convinced Google to drop World Vision, and got MSNBC to stop having Family Research Council on its news programs. Faithful America is now quoted by the media as the voice of American Christians, even while it protests against evangelical leaders like Franklin Graham, Jerry Falwell Jr., and Albert Moeller. Faithful America describes itself as the largest online community of Christians putting faith into action for social justice. Its critics accuse it of using faith as a cover to silence conservatives. Scott Walter is with the website Influence Watch, which tracks the activity and funding of groups like Faithful America. We asked him to describe them. <laughs> oh, that's easy. Just, just another uh, half-fake left-wing nest of operatives. I mean, they, they get taken much more seriously than they deserve. In this video from Faithful America, activists are seen trying to get then MSNBC host Chris Matthews to stop having Tony Perkins of Family Research Council on his program. Matthews accuses them of censorship. You want to silence people. You want to silence people. No, we want a progressive No, you want, you want him, what, they, what, what channel do you want Tony Perkins on? What channel well, would you like him on? I'd prefer that he's not. See? You but. want to sign him? <laughs> Faithful America's latest target is Jim Baker. After a natural path on his show suggested his Silver Solution product could help fight coronavirus. The left in the media said Baker claimed it was a cure for COVID-19, something he did not say. But Faithful America is trying to get channels to drop his program. Before becoming independent in 2018, Faithful America was the creation of the National Council of Churches. And then was a part of the Citizen Engagement Lab, which was funded by George Soros. In 2014, when Faithful America took on the Archdiocese of Newark with a petition drive, an investigation of their petition with more than 22,000 names showed none were Catholics in the Newark Archdiocese and 100 pages in the petition were blank. Faithful America did not respond to our request for a comment for this story, but Walters says Faithful America does not have anywhere near the grassroots support it claims. Are, are there a few thousand grumpy left-wingers who will complain about anything if you give them a little poke? Yes. Um, does this remotely mean that any pastor anywhere, uh, any church leader, any politician should take this seriously as a profound grassroots movement? No. Dale Hurd, CBN News. I don't mind groups doing political things. Uh, they ought to. Uh, if people have a political point of view, please express that. But don't masquerade as something you're not. And particularly if you're funded by people who have a very definite political agenda and you yourselves are birthed out of political operatives, just be upfront with that. Uh, don't try to claim what, you, what you're not. Uh, that's, that's the point. Uh, in a, an environment of free, free speech, and I firmly believe in free speech, have your speech, uh, but do it from a platform uh, that really tells who you are, uh, who's, who's doing what, and that way we can trust the American people to make their own decisions. Uh, and come to their own conclusions. But in the current environment, uh, it just seems that these, these things are multiplying. And who's saying what and who's really backing it? Uh, we, we've, we've got to get a little more transparent in what we're doing. But please, don't, don't masquerade as something you're not. Terry? I think the American people are becoming a little more cautious about not just believing what they hear, but doing their homework on some of this. Well, coming up, a baby is born with severe brain damage and he's expected to suffer a lifetime of seizures. Who shows up in the NICU as an answer to prayer? And how does this infant receive a miracle? You're about to find out after this.
limp, no heart rate, nothing. That's how Uriah Sheriff came into the world. But the baby with the first name that means my light is Jehovah had something very powerful going for him. Two praying parents who were trusting God for a miracle. Hannah Sheriff was in labor, ready to meet her fifth child. But something was wrong. I looked up at my nurse and I said, I'm not okay. So I feel like I'm gonna faint or pass out. The room just began narrowing. Then the baby's heart rate dropped. At that moment, it became everybody jump on and let's go. We got a big time emergency. The staff raced Hannah to the OR for an emergency C-section. Her husband, Jacob, was close behind. Fear hadn't set in yet until I walked into the operating room and saw what was going on. I opened up the uterus, there was just blood everywhere, everywhere. And then I see him come out and he doesn't look like, I mean, he's dead. Limp, no heart rate, nothing. Immediately, the team started CPR on the baby, a boy the couple had named Urias. Everything within me wanted to reach up, go hold him and, and tell him everything was gonna be okay. I got laser focused on just prayer. Jacob also texted their family to pray, as with each passing minute, Urias's chances for survival were slipping away. After about 10 minutes, if you don't have a fetal heart rate, it's just a fetal effort. Although the critical 10 minute mark passed, the team kept trying. Finally, they got a pulse, but the baby had now been without oxygen or blood flow for 20 minutes. It was just this, almost this squaring away with, okay, God, where are we? Where are you? Unable to breathe on his own, Urias was intubated and prepped to be life flighted to a hospital in Plano, Texas, 80 miles away. Hannah would have to stay behind to heal from her surgery and loss of blood. She said, you go with him. You need to be with him. By the time Urias arrived at Texas Health Presbyterian, he had started having seizures. Neonatologist Dr. Eduardo Perez explains Hannah had suffered a placental abruption. He was born in dire straits, severely compromised because of the premature detachment of the uh, placenta. Placed in NICU, Urias was diagnosed with hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, brain damage caused by a lack of oxygen and blood. He had a severe form, the one that we consider that is at higher risk of having uh, long-term delays in terms of development. He most likely is gonna have cerebral palsy. You could probably expect seizures most of his life. He may never be able to feed himself. He may never be able to walk. He may never be able to talk. The best doctors could do was put him on a 72-hour cooling treatment to lower his body temperature to try to minimize the damage. Even then, there was little hope. 40%, they don't make it because, you know, it's, it's so, so severe and so, so devastating. It's just one punch after another. I can't control anything, but I can trust God. I don't feel it like some emotional thing. It was a determination and a commitment. I'm going to trust God. On duty that night was nurse Latricia Bell. A monitor told her the baby was still having seizures despite medications. Then, later that night, Urias opened his eyes. He had been laying so still, and for him to open up his eyes, looking around, this was a big deal. Quickly, she went to get Jacob. Seeing Urias' eyes for the first time, Jacob pleaded with God to heal his son. It's like I could hear their voices again, what they're saying about him. And I just remembered, don't be afraid, believe only. After Jacob finished praying and left, Nurse Bell says she and Urias weren't alone. I felt such a warmth. Every hair on my body stood up. I knew that I was in the presence of God. He, he was right there at that moment. I looked at the monitors and there was no more seizures. That was the end of it. 
The next day, doctors released Hannah to see her baby boy. That was probably the hardest thing, is seeing him lay there. It's like I couldn't just reach down and grab him. And I felt like all control was just ripped out from underneath me. That night, the couple asked their church and people on social media to pray. If you're going to pray, pray this. If God's Word says we speak and we believe, then I'm going to speak and I'm going to believe. Over the next few days, Urias showed more signs of improvement, his EEG showing normal brain activity. By day six, he was breathing on his own. That was extremely reassuring. So that's a happy surprise. Finally, Hannah held Urias for the first time. He was one week old. All the emotions probably hit me the most in that moment because it's all I wanted, just to have him close and to tell him, like, we're going to get through this. We've made it this far, Urias. Here he is. At three weeks old, Urias was cleared to go home. Over the next year, he hit all his developmental milestones. Then, at his one-year checkup with the neurologist. He said, I've only had a couple other cases where people have made a full recovery, and I'm just telling you, he's one of them. Today, Urias is still the healthy, energetic, happy little boy they prayed for. You hear about miracles, but God let me see that one. Even in moments where I don't feel him, like I can't see him, his faithfulness doesn't change. What an incredible miracle. What an incredible story. And what a teaching for all of us about standing, standing strong when voices are speaking one thing to us, when our eyes are seeing one thing but we are called to declare the word of the Lord over our circumstances. It was a miracle that this happened, but miracles are sometimes initiated by our obedience. And so we know there are many of you out there who are looking at this story, maybe moved to tears, but certainly moved in your faith by what God did here. God wants to do for you what he did for Uriah and his family, whatever your circumstance might be. He's our rock. He's the cleft in the rock. He's the place we go to when we have a need. And he is able. He's powerful. He's the creator of the universe. He can and will move your circumstances. So we want to stand together with you today, believe for you with whatever your need might be. We've got some needs sent in by some of you here. Um, someone here is asking for the healing of a herniated disc in their spine. Someone saying wisdom and discernment for our president and all leaders making decisions in regard to COVID-19. And then someone saying that our family would be delivered from strife and unity would be restored. There's one that my eyes be healed of severe macular degeneration and glaucoma. And then someone praying that I would deliver a healthy baby this summer. And here's one for a financial miracle to catch up on our mortgage to prevent foreclosure. Let's pray for these. Let's pray for you. Let's pray for all the needs. And if you have needs in your life, let's just lift them to the Lord. And keep in mind what was said in that story. And it echoes what the Word of God says. I believed, therefore I spoke. Now, how hard was it for that father to believe and then speak life over his son? How hard was that? You have doctors literally saying there's no hope. Doctors saying, I, I opened the uterus and all there was was blood. We had no heart rate. We, we had nothing. The, the, your son is limp. And then as they get a heartbeat, then the recurring things. He'll never be able to feed himself. He'll never do this. He'll never do that. He'll never, never, never. Never is a very strong word. It breaks right into your heart. It breaks right into your innermost being. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart and your mind. And today with COVID-19, we have a lot of reason to guard our hearts and our minds. You know, when everything seems bleak and how long is the shutdown? What's going to happen to the economy? What's going to happen to my job? 
my mortgage? How am I going to be able to feed my family? All of these things want to break through. Guard your heart and your mind. And right now, stand on the Word of God and say, I believe that. God says He will provide all my need according to His riches and glory. God says His righteous right hand will uphold me. God says that my diseases were healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ on the cross 2,000 years ago. God says all my sins have been forgiven. They have been forgotten. They have been cast into the, into the depths of the sea. As far as the east is from the west, they have been removed. When he looks at me, he doesn't consider that anymore. He looks at me and says, I am his child. I am his beloved one. That's what God says. Let your heart say the same thing and say, yes, Daddy, I believe. And from that place of belief, let us speak over the problem and speak the truth of God, not the truth of negative, but the truth of His unlimited possibility. With God, all things are possible. And you just saw that. What he's done for others, he wants to do for you. He's no respecter of persons. Let's let him break through to your miracle right now. Let's pray. Lord, we lift all of these prayer requests to you. For the one who has financial difficulty, trouble paying their mortgage. For the mother who's worried about her delivery for the one who's having trouble with their eyesight, macular degeneration, for all the prayer requests, Lord God, for everyone in the audience right now, we believe in our heart, mm -hmm. and therefore we speak that you are God Almighty, that with you all things are possible. With you, you make the way. With you, you are able to create streams in the desert, you're able to have water spring forth from a rock. You're able to provide all our need according to your riches and glory. We proclaim that, Lord God. We believe it. We speak it now. Now, for anyone sick, we say over you, be healed now in Jesus' name. And be every bit whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, let the presence of God invade every single cell in your body. Let there be life and health in Jesus' name. Uh, there's someone you're suffering with flu-like symptoms and you, you've got a spike in your fever and you're, and you're just really afraid you've got this uh, virus and, and God is speaking to you and right now that fever is going away. You're literally fe feeling it drain out of your body. Be healthy, be whole. All fear, all, all anxiety be gone now. In Jesus' name, be healed. Terry? Now, there's someone named Leslie. You have a condition. I, I really don't know what it is, but it's like an affliction. It's come upon you. It has uh, changed your life. It, it has just been... Leslie, don't own that. It is not yours. Don't speak it as my this or my that. Speak the word of the Lord over it. God is healing you today. That thing is lifted off of you. Walk in freedom in Jesus' name. Um, there's someone you've got problems in your right jaw and you're not even praying for it. But God is aware and he's, he's saying, I want to heal that jaw right now in Jesus' name. All that pain leave you. You've gotten accustomed to it. God's not accustomed to it. He wants you healthy. He yeah. wants you whole. In Jesus' name, be healed. Yeah, somebody else with a, you have a right hip issue. Actually, I don't know if they call it the saddle or whatever, but your, your whole system is off as far as your walk is concerned, your gait. God's healing that for you right now. Just receive it in Jesus' name. Someone else you're suffering with these random skin lesions or eruptions, and uh, it's red scaly patches and then uh, like pustules. God's healing you. He's taken away whatever caused that. In the name of Jesus, be gone. And just let peace be on you right now. 
Let the peace that passes all understanding guard you and be with you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you were mir work miracles today. We thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you for the hedge of protection that you have around your anointed ones. We, we, we thank you that you love your children. We thank you for all that you have done and will do and will continue to do. For you shape all things together for our good. Be with us now, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you've been touched by God, let us know. Let us share your good report with the world. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. And if you need prayer, we're here for you. Uh, we want to pray for you, and we're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's our honor, our privilege to pray with you. So call us, 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Well, still ahead, a message for the church amid the COVID-19 crisis. A pastor from one of the hot spots tells how to battle fear with faith and chaos with calm. Dr. David Ireland joins us coming up. Plus, a family business on the brink of going bust. What unconventional action does this wife take to keep on trucking? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to Washington for this CBN News Break. The Little Sisters of the Poor Catholic Charitable Group will be back before the Supreme Court next week, this time online for oral arguments in their case against Pennsylvania. The now eight-year-long battle is over the group's religious exemption from the HHS contraceptive mandate. The legal group Beckett, who represents them, says now more than ever, as the Little Sisters work tirelessly to preserve, uh, to preserve the physical and spiritual health of the elderly poor in their care, it is important for Pennsylvania and other state governments to leave the Little Sisters alone and let them carry out their ministry in peace. Well, even though the outbreak is dominating the headlines, natural disasters are still happening around the country. A large storm hit Virginia Beach the day after Easter, knocking down trees across the country, including one in Pansy's yard. She said, I looked out my front door and I, all I saw was a tree. A tree removal service would have cost her thousands of dollars, which she didn't have. She'd just been furloughed from her job. But CBN's Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Team arrived at her house and made quick work of the huge tree blocking the yard and an adjacent road. Pansy told OB she was overwhelmed when she saw the team. Operation Blessing thanks its partners who allowed them to help families around the world and uh, around the country and the world during this difficult time. Well, you can find out more about Operation Blessing by visiting OB.org. Gordon and Terry will be back with more today's 700 Club right after this. After his dad died, Barry McGar had one desperate prayer to honor the promise he'd made to his father to turn the family business around. His wife, Joanne, came up with a plan to do just that from something she saw on the 700 Club. Barry and Joanne McGar run Bluegrass Transport and Expeditors, a successful trucking business in Henderson, Kentucky. Barry's been part of the company for 30 years, ever since he was a young man and started driving for his dad. That was his whole dream, is to have something that he could pass on to his kids. But just a few years ago, they were on the verge of losing the family business. Before Barry's father passed away in 2011, Barry made him a promise. I just told him that I would do everything I can to turn this business around. By September, the company was down to eight trucks. I'm going by our next door neighbor trucking company and they had some new trucks parked out front. And I said, Lord, would you take us back to that day that we could buy new trucks like that? And I, I told God, I said, I would like to think that I could make dad proud to turn this business around. Even though times were tough, Barry and Joanne were committed to tithing. It's a concept they learned from watching the 700 Club. I was hearing other people's testimonies of going through a financial challenge, giving, and it's when they gave that God blessed back. And it was a conviction so in my heart that I really felt like this is going to be the ultimate test 
for us to give at this crucial crossroads in our lives. And I just felt like I had enough faith that once we gave, that's when we were going to really see the blessing come. Not only did Joanne and Barry continue tithing, they decided to make a pledge to CBN in faith from their business account. A couple of weeks later, a friend and business associate called Barry at work with an idea. He wanted to be one third partner with us. And so it's been a perfect match. Right away, I mean, we started holding our own. In the last seven years, the business has done more than hold its own. In fact, it's tripled. The company has grown from 13 employees to 40, and from eight trucks to 33. Barry says he knows that his dad would be proud. I sure would like for my dad to know that this business has turned around. And so today, I mean, it's just the difference in night and day and what God's blessing has been. Barry and Joanne see it all as a result of their obedience through giving we could see a definite correlation with an answer to the prayer, our giving to CBN, and God bringing us out of that situation. Partnering with CBN is special uh, to us because it's not just what we believe God can do for us by our giving, but it's also to know that you're given the message of testimonies and to think how many more people are out there hearing the message of the gospel. He will come through. God will make a way where there seems like there is no way. He always makes a way. He makes a way for his people. And all you have to do is do it his way. Here's a word for you. It's from Deuteronomy chapter 28. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. If God is speaking to you, obey it. Obey what he tells you to do. And when you do that, you have wonderful things happening. And one of the things he tells us to do is to tithe. If we just take all of the increase and apply it to our own needs, well, we're not obeying what he's telling us to do. He tells us, if you do this, if you test me with your tithes and offerings, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you cannot contain. Then on top of it, he adds, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So it's a, it's a twofold blessing. What a wonderful thing when you just say yes to God. Yes, I'll do it your way. If you'd like to do that, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to be a member of the 700 Club. How much is that? Well, it's just $20 a month. That breaks out to 65 cents a day. Some of you can give at a higher level. We have 700 Club Gold for you at $40 a month. We also have 1,000 Club. That's $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. At whatever level, when you call right now and pledge, I want you to have this. It's my father's latest book. It's called The 10 Laws for Success, Keys to Win in Work, Family, and Finance. It's yours when you become a member. And when you call and, and say, I want to do this via Pledge Express, that's automatic giving, electronic giving, we can send as our gift to you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs. So make sure you ask for Pledge Express when you call or you just go to CBN.com. When you give monthly on the Internet, you automatically sign up for Pledge Express. Do it now. Call 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Well, up next, what's the most powerful weapon in the fight against the fear of COVID-19? Pastor and author David Ireland joins us with the answer after this. Uncertainty, anxiety, fear, in a matter of weeks, our lives have been radically upended by the coronavirus. And with no end in sight, how do we continue to cope? Our next guest is the pastor of a church in one of our nation's hot spots, and he has a clear message for this chaotic time. Take a look. As the pastor of 9,000 member Christ Church in Northern New Jersey, Dr. David Ireland is addressing the fear that COVID-19 has brought to many. Don't struggle between the tension of fear and faith as we walk through this global pandemic together. It's totally normal. And if Dr. Ireland believes that no matter what our feelings may suggest in these unusual times, God is always in loving control. 
Please welcome back to the 700 Club, David Ireland. It's wonderful to have you back with us. Oh, it's good being back with you, Terry. Good seeing you. Well, you pastor a 9,000 member church in New Jersey, which has been hard hit by this virus. How has your congregation been hit by this and how is it reacting? Well, we're seeing a, a reality of the two things going on simultaneously. We've lost five congregants, wow. four of which to COVID, and then another 45 families that have lost loved ones related to us uh, because of the virus. And so we're, we're hit hard. And it does take a lot of encouragement and a lot of then trusting of God in this. But uh, it's, it's, not, it's not an easy thing to walk through, but uh, we're walking through it. Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. In a recent message, you talked about the tension between fear and faith. Share that with us. Well, everything about Scripture speaks of tension. It's not black or white. There are a lot of gray areas. And so the tension is that there's sometimes we're going to feel a sense of fear. Another time we're going to feel faith. Other times it's just like the duality of what Jesus says. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Tension. Our God speaks of himself in a paradoxical way. He's the Alpha and the Omega, first and the last. Paul tells us that we're both sinners and saints. So simultaneously, we're being pulled into these two realities and if we focus more on one over the other, we're going to find ourselves in error. And the same way Jesus says he is both truth and grace. That's a tension. And so I've been communicating to my congregation and anyone who listens that it's quite normal to feel these two polar opposite emotions and forces, particularly during times of crisis and this global pandemic. Well, you also emphasize the contrast between near and far. What did you mean by that? I, I was drawing this, this exegesis or the pulling out of the text from Matthew 14 when Jesus is walking on the water and then he tells Peter, come on, walk with me. And Peter jumps out of the boat and he's walking on water and he's walking far to where Jesus was. But then when he starts to sink, Jesus pulls him out of the water. So at the same time, we see this tension of far and near. In other words, there are times when we pray, the heavens seem silent. God, at times, because of his silence, may be interpreted as being uncaring, unsympathetic, unkind. And so we then look at it as God's far. But it's not true. God's near. And so he responds quickly. He hears our hearts, uh, our prayer. And when he doesn't respond, we need to trust his grace. And so that's why I say there's this tension between far and near in regards to how we view God. What's the most important action that we can take to bring calm out of the chaos that we feel with these situations? A great question. I think that what we can do is simply trust God. We are not God. We don't have the ability to bring any kind of change, no matter the medical community are trying their best and they recognize the sovereignty of God, the need for God, and they're trusting in God. In fact, we have a large chaplaincy division in our church, and our chaplains have established this you know, call-in number for all of those working in the first response area, the medical doctors, physicians, you know, police officers, you know, nurses. And they're calling because they realize that all of their wisdom, all of their strength, all of their knowledge doesn't make them sufficient. And so the one thing we should do during this time is to simply rest in God's God's grace, God's mercy, and trust in Him. You are a very prolific writer. You've written so many books, and um, you address so many things that the body of Christ needs to be addressing um, in their own hearts and minds. How should the body be responding to the COVID crisis? I mean, as a whole, not just an individual church, but the whole body of Christ. There are two of my books that come to mind. One is titled Raising a Child Who Prays. And in it, I offer lessons, practical lessons and prayer exercises for children. And so, since so many of us, we are in this stay-at-home phase and requirement, why not turn this into a teaching moment? And so you know, that book would be excellent. The other book, which my latest book, is called One in Christ. In fact, uh, the listeners if, and watch uh, viewers can go to the website oneinchristbook.com, there's a free downloadable workbook. I take the perspective of being a coach in the area of diversity. In fact, I worked with the NBA as a diversity coach, 
helping these big guys. I was the shortest guy in five square miles <laughs> when I met with these athletes. I'm five seven on a good day, <laughs> and so <laughs> and uh, and so I take a posture of coaching people in the areas of diversity. It's not about lecturing. So the book One in Christ it says, let me take you by the hand and coach you to be more effective and efficient in interacting with people that are different than yourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is what we need. Well, as I mentioned, uh, David Ireland is a prolific author. His latest book is called, it's the one he mentioned, One in Christ. It's available wherever books are sold. I also want you to know he's our featured speaker at CBN's Week of Prayer Chapel today. We're going to be live streaming that service at noon Eastern. To watch, all you have to do is go to CBN.com or you can join us live on Facebook and YouTube. We'll be praying for the requests that you and our partners and viewers have sent us. If you haven't sent in those requests, it's not too late. Give us a call at one 1- 800 700 7000 or go to cbn.com and we thank david ireland for being with us today gordon my pleasure terry well we have a word from jesus for you today from the gospel of john the 16th chapter uh, and this is an unusual promise and an unusual one to wrap your head around in this world you will have trouble but take heart I have overcome the world. Today, realize that Jesus has already overcome everything. He is already shaping all things together for, you, for your good, and you will be with him for all eternity. God bless.